Good afternoon, uh, fellow citizens. Uh, my name is Masesa Demiano, and I am the panel, the moderator today. And uh, of course, I'm stepping in for, for my team that has been running uh, these uh, conversations uh, from uh, the start. So we are here today, and this is the fourth conversation we are having with the universities. This is the Inter-University Interface Debate Championships, and I'm um, engaged with uh, Bugema University. And... Uh, being the fourth and the last on, the, on this conversation for this month, we shall later have uh, a physical engagement where Bugema will be joined by Makere University, they will be joined by uh, Kampala University, and then uh, Kavari University. We are waiting to see who will uh, emerge as the champion and later go to uh, qualify for the next round. Uh, before they join the panel, I have uh, a team of very organized uh, uh, young ladies, uh, young ladies and gentlemen uh, from Bogema University. And on uh, the panel, I, I don't know from the specific order, I'll get to know according to how they are seated, very organized uh, university. I have Serumaga Badru and he's doing uh, uh, business administration in economics, I, mean, I think measuring in economics and insurance. Yeah, Badru, good to yes, see you. Yes, yeah, pleasure. You can work for us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Abadru, for being here, and uh, we wait to hear from you. Uh, then uh, followed by uh, Nabuko Asirebeka. She's uh, doing bachelor's in, in education and or education in arts. I think that's how it is. Yeah, yes, Rebecca, yes. good to see you. Good yeah, to see thank you. Too. And thank you for looking sharp. Uh, then uh, followed by Ayebare Kwezire, uh, doing bachelor's in, uh, of science in nursing. Kwezire, good to see you. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, and I hope uh, the viewers are watching. And also, finally, is uh, Mugisha Roberts uh, uh, doing bachelor's in accounting. Mugisha, good to see you. Nice to see you, too, sir. Interesting about this discussion that there is no one doing political science and the other uh, 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 subjects and courses that people would think that uh, those would be the most active in uh, students. But now we are having... Uh, young people and students who are doing a diverse uh, spectrum of uh, courses. And uh, this now really shows that uh, it's a university because what we know, and according to, to the background, possibly if I could take you through the introduction of our, our conversation, we are discussing the state of civic space in Uganda. How does shrinking civic space context affect universities as marketplace for ideas? And the uh, introduction, maybe to start off, Civic space is a bedrock of open democratic society. When civic space is open, citizens and civil society organizations are able to organize, participate, and communicate without hindrance. In doing so, they are able to claim their rights and influence, and influence the political and social structures around them. This can only happen when a state holds by its duty to protect its citizens and respect uh, facilities and, and facilitate their fundamental rights to associate, assemble, peacefully and freely express views and opinions. Of course, we have no Article 29 of the Constitution 1995 as amended of the Republic of Uganda provides for the protection of freedom of conscience, expression, movement, religion, assembly and association. So going down to the universities, Universities have been referred to as marketplace for ideas. That's why you see I've been, uh, I've been impressed by the spectrum for where uh, all of us come from, from education, we have people from accounting, we have people doing nursing, and, you know, and, uh, and this all combines what a university is supposed to be. Universities have been referred to as a marketplace for ideas. It is a place where students go to study and attain knowledge and qualification. But it's also a place where leaders are groomed and students are able to meet different people and demand for respect of the fundamental rights. From one public university that started in 1922, Uganda today has a boss of over 50 universities. The state of civic space has been characterized by arrests of students during demonstrations, arrests of civil society activists and observers, a day before elections, by the way, in Uganda, the UCC ordered for suspension of all internet gateways and access points a few days after Facebook was uh, shut down, an action that has continued up to date. There has been arrests of 
for example, opposition members and few of them have been youth and largely youth uh, that have we've seen so much participate in uh, in uh, in uh, politics, uh, especially in university students. Uh, there has been also, uh, of course, uh, supporters and their and their and their uh, the candidates and their supporters throughout the elections. But also previously, we saw introduction of the Public Order Management Act, uh, 2013, the NGO Act, 2016, of course, the Computer Misuse Act, uh, 2011, among other laws. There are big concerns that these actions are being clawed back most of uh, the gains made towards the open society based on expanded and protected civil, uh, civic space in the country. And uh, to this topic, the state of civic space in Uganda, how does the shrinking civic space context affect, affect our universities as a marketplace for ideas? Of course, uh, we shall have, I need us to have a, a more structured kind of a conversation for the first time, as opposed to how I engage uh, differently. We shall have our opening statements while featuring some of the questions that I will share. In, uh, in three minutes, each of you will be submitting. Then. Uh, We'll have a general question that will take about five minutes of uh, your time, uh, each of you. Then we'll have specific uh, questions that uh, will also uh, take five minutes of your time. Then, of course, we'll have a, a closure where you uh, give us your parting shots as, uh, uh, as we wind up. Uh, so this is uh, the first question that we'll take into the three minutes each. Uh, I need to start uh, from how I started introducing you. And for those who are following this conversation, kindly get to, we are live on our Civic Space uh, TV. We are live on YouTube. Now we are featuring on YouTube. Kindly subscribe on the YouTube space and follow your fellow students here and candidates who are uh, being part of this conversation. Subscribe there, follow the discussions, comment, uh, give us your views, your reactions. We shall capture them. And we are running on the hashtag Interuniversity debates. So if you're on Twitter, you go to interuniversity debates hashtag and throw in your comments. We shall capture your views. These views not only inform us here, but uh, inform the general spectrum and the general uh, university and the students' movement uh, at large. So let us start from there. Uh, to start with uh, <coughs> Selma Gabadro, what uh, do you yes, understand? Please. Yes. Are you, are you clear? Is your audio clear? Yeah, yeah, sure. Clear. What do you understand? What do you understand by civic space? First of all, what is the current state of civic space in Uganda? Uh, yes, thank you, please. I'm pleasured. Uh, the current state of civic space in Uganda, uh, in fact, calling it a shrinking civic space, uh, is a bit more of a pretense than a reality. We can say it's really closing. Uh, the civic space, uh, if I'm to narrate more about it, uh, it is an essential part of the democratic fabric uh, in any arena of contestation and bargaining for democracy, uh, social justice, societal rights, and anything fundamentally related to human rights as well as uh, democracy, if I'm to say. Uh, it comprises a lot of actors and stakeholders uh, who view life in different perspectives. Uh, they value life uh, depending on their views. Let me say societal behaviors, the general human rights. Uh, in fact, rights that are fundamental to everyone at large. Uh, a civic society, in simple terms, it prepares people uh, to participate in their national decision-making process, uh, as well as contributing to societal development, inclusive development, yeah, in a democratic manner, mm -hmm. if I'm to say. We've had... Okay. Yes, go on. We've go had... On. We've had quite a number of organizations in Uganda that are civil, uh, civil organizations. Some people usually term them towards CSOs, uh, the, the New Society Uganda, Land Alliance, and the other women emancipation organizations. They are all entitled to the topic that we're talking today. Uh, 
Yeah, I think I'm erase it as we go on. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we shall uh, get back and uh, uh, dig deep into this conversation. I need to, to invite in uh, Rebecca. I need your, your three minutes. Uh, what is the current state of civic space in universities? Okay, thank you very much. Um, the current state of civic space in, in the universities is really shrinking because actually we wouldn't be coming up, coming up with this topic if it, was, if, if it was broad and if it wasn't shrinking. So which surely shows that it, it has raised an alarm to show that there is a shrinking in civic space. So that clearly shows that the civic space is down and it is clamping down. So I wanted to uh, explain about the civic space, which is, uh, which is a set of universally accepted rules that allows people to commute, organize, participate, and communicate with each other without hindrance. So the reason why it's the, the reason why we have come up with this topic, we have been we have actually looked at it that it's shrinking. And what means with shrinking, it shows that it's being repressed, the civil space is being repressed. There is something that is repressing the, the civic space, which is an alarm for this topic. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Rebecca. I, you talk about uh, the shrinking civic space and in the context of, uh, I needed you to, to bring it closer to how uh, the university students are, are engaged, how you feel your space is, is, is open so much. But uh, to that, I need to, to possibly bring in, uh, as we continue, I'll bring in uh, Quisiera, and I'll ask you, uh, do you think uh, possibly universities are still active spaces for engagement uh, with the ever shrinking space? Uh, thank you so much, the moderator. Uh, to me, I think we are not disagreeing or agreeing whether the civic space is decreasing. It is indeed closing, like my fellow pre discussed and said. Um, the universities are always looking up to the external environment. We learn what we study here, and then we go outside and practice it. Universities as marketplaces, they always have ideas. That's why we always have people coming out to join in employment sectors, uh, such as you know, nurses, medical people, we have the engineers, and so many others, including leaders. So nowadays, we are having it being put down, like the way uh, some people had, had said. For example, we know that civic space is the way how people are allowed to practice their freedoms, assemble, observe their, their, their expression, conscience, and religion. But you find that when people are trying to become better leaders, try to fight for their freedoms, try to define what they really need, come together to increase the social well-being, it is always infringed on. I can give an example of some uh, things that have happened in Uganda, the arrests of, uh, of uh, the president of Makere that, that happened, you know, early this, early this year, maybe in June, almost there, 26 there, you know, he was arrested because he was trying to petition to the ministry so that they can open schools, even trying to ask whether they can revert the 12% tax, you know, that was put on, on, uh, on, on internet because people were not accessing, students were not accessing e-learning. So it is continuing to shrink because our leaders are the ones that are putting it down. That's what I can say, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Quizera. And I think uh, we shall interrogate that further. So I, I also need to bring in uh, Mugisha. Uh, Robert, are you there? Uh, so Robert, I want, uh, I want you to... to to just tell us, how does or how are university students like you utilizing the current civic space in Uganda? Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm glad and, uh, to be here and live on air to be addressing this on how the university students are utilizing the current civic space. Mm -hmm. In the first place, I want to express my 
word of affirmation that the fact that right now as we speak, we are able to hold this dialogue together is a sign that I'm actually using the remaining little or much depending on uh, the speaker's view or extent of assumption. It means that I can still use it. And so the avenues to which we, the university students today, are getting to air out that which is pertinent. Mm. We are using it right, depending on whichever extent it is, of course, varying from one verse to another. But the question is specific, how are university students using the current civic space? And so that definitely has to bring into context uh, the term civic space and the civics. I won't go back into the introduction as you had earlier said, but I want you to bear with me and witness that if you are talking about civics and civic space without relating it to its core meaning, and that is to say having civics as the meaning of the study of rights and responsibilities or duties of citizenship, then I would be arguing something out of its context. The space that we will be discussing right now would not be any other space, but there could be many spaces, but in particular, how are the students, universities, utilizing the space they have now? The degree or extent as to whether it is big or shrinking or expanding will vary. But in my own context, if that is the definition, knowing that civics is going to evolve the engagement into political process, into a sense of belonging, enlightenment of uh, uh, the duties and responsibilities, definitely that tells me that a citizen of whom the students are part of the citizens of the country would therefore be considered a part of the nation and hence an active role in the determining what the nation does. Therefore, if the students who are the nation uh, citizens and participants to that matter, therefore, if they still use that chance to speak or to act in accordance with activities that are expected of them, and then civics would be in use. Back to the question, as it says, how are university students using the civic space they have? Mm -hmm. One, these are some of the university students as we are talking about, who can use the avenues we have like now, engaging into these debates and conversations to handle or to discuss about the pertinent matters that avail uh, concern to the country. Two, these are the university students that are one registered voters that could be taking part or action in the various activities in their country. Therefore, if we have voters here, as to whether their votes are counted or not would be a discussion for another day, but we see them doing it. And so if they take part in it, these university students participating in the voting election uh, processes, in having the campaigns, whether political or any other, then it means that the extent or the space in civics particularly that is still available, these students are making use of it. And therefore, I beg to submit with so much more that we are going to dive into as we enter into the body of the discussion. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Robert, for, for that. I need to, to, to bring, I think, Quizera uh, back. Oh, Badru, I need to bring Badru back. Badru, you we were still discussing uh, the, the affairs around uh, why, and you think there's still active space for, for you, the students out there, to engage in um, civic, civic and uh, political engagements in the country. Do you think there are still more avenues, or do you think there are still it's, it's shrinking, the space is shrinking? And if it's shrinking, uh, what, is, what is that that you're doing as a student to ensure that you have uh, a better space for you to engage? Uh, yes, thank you, please. I'm pleasured again. Mm -hmm. uh, to my discovery, much as the space is shrinking, yes, right, as you can confirm, uh, but quite uh, the number of opportunities uh, that you can pertain to that you can take, and in fact, this issue can be solved out. Uh, it is a multitude of ideas that can be put forward because uh, this attempt to close the shrinking civic space is not actually new. Uh, it's a problem that we've been uh, facing 
our predecessors have experienced the same problem. Uh, still, we who are in for education are still experiencing the same problem. Uh, yet, if I'm to submit, uh, sincerely, every verse desire almost the highest institution of education that we have in our countries by now. Uh, as I discussed earlier, that we have a number of actors and stakeholders that have different views uh, about this shrinking civic space. In fact, there are quite a number of solutions that you can put in really to close or to squeeze this shrinking civic space. Uh, I'm yet indebted to speak out some, should there be an opportunity, because uh, there may be related that even the moderator is like, oh no, don't tackle that part, because we may be under the rate. Should you dig deep into the political arena of the country? Uh, but if I may beg to say, no, uh, actually, actually, Badru, I think uh, one of uh, of uh, our 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 slogans as a civic space TV is uh, freedom always. We yes. why we created this space for that we can openly engage without mm. any fear or or contradiction. We encourage everyone to be as open, to be as yes. outspoken. So once you have the opportunity to share out your views, you are not yes. limited by anything. Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, it would be more of a lie if I could leave a statement like this, that the president enjoys higher rankings at the annual official function, that the vice chancellor, yet the qualification of a vice chancellor is really a doctoral degree and the extensive administrative experience. Yet here in Uganda, really, a president only needs a senior 60 pass sleep and a gun, if I'm to add on. Uh, mm -hmm. If we are to throw away the gun, indeed, and involve much of the citizens in democracy, if we are to throw the gun away, uh, mm -hmm. and we do every activity in a democratic manner, yeah. uh, it really gives hope that much of the things that happen and to university students may end up closing down. Therefore, we still have more space to enjoy. It is our country where we have to enjoy more of the privileges provided by, by nature. If initially Uganda was the part of Africa, uh, uh, but now is uh, uh, moving forward to become the biggest bloodshed deployment, it means universities are even going to continue or start breeding revolutionaries. The very first step to closing this shrinking civic space is promoting democracy. Uh, if I may say, uh, what we term towards the Harvard of Africa, if not Uganda, that is Makede. Uh, there are quite a number of activities that have taken place. Uh, we've realized our brothers and sisters are, are being tampered with, with ammunition. The primary rule of the gun is to shoot, and once you shoot, almost death arises. So if this phenomenon changes, if the way these people address things changes, indeed, uh, we are more likely to enjoy a local environment. Environment that is governed by laws and the rule of law that really give us an environment to enjoy what we are meant to enjoy. Uh, if I may back it up with another example, uh, should the government change tactics? In fact, uh, it is so rare to find a military government uh, in a country where uh, they assume to be having democracy. Historically, you can't assume it. It can't be anyway. Uganda having uh, a government that came into power because of a gun, we expect much of the things to be by the gun. But there are some things which they really hide in and make us assume maybe we are in another thing, if I may say. I'll back it up with an example of our academician, Dr. Stella Nyanz. The way she was handled uh, is quite alarming. Uh, uh, suspect, I, I don't think we can even call it a, a point of suspicion, uh, claiming that she, she would hold she would hold less lectures than what she was entitled to. Others are saying she abused the president. So such things 
the government is failing to relate education, development, and politics. So should we bridge that gap, uh, education, development, and then politics, and yeah. bring all those areas together? This shrinking civic space is more likely to close. We are likely more to enjoy other than what it would be. Mm. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Badru. You've raised uh, very pertinent issues, and uh, those are key and critical to, to the engagement and the freedoms of you as students. I, I need to just uh, bring on uh, Rebecca quickly and possibly to integrate. Uh, Rebecca, Badru talked about the issue. You, you raised, you brought in democracy into this conversation. I just want us to, to just have a, a small conversation around he, this, and because uh, just last week we we had we're celebrating the, the International Day of Democracy, and I felt, and since we're in the month of democracy, I felt we, we needed to just have a conversation around here. Now that Badru has brought it in, uh, of course we we are. We, we know the accepted uh, freedoms of, democ of democracy uh, in society, which is our uh, freedom of press. We have, uh, of course, uh, uh, free and fair elections for parliamentary, local and parliamentary, of course, with the presidential elections. And uh, of course, we also know the issues on, around accountability uh, for, for government entities, ministers to parliament. And uh, now these, these issues are, 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 are are what we know as that should be key and a free a few tenants to to uh, freedom of press yeah key tenants to to a, to a democracy how far do you think uh, we've gone or we can score as a country in regarding to these areas and these aspects in the country thank you very much uh, about the issue of democracy and how far we can go um, according to the states right now, I don't think there is anywhere we can go. Like we are so, so down when it comes to percentage, we are like 30%. Why? Because everything, we don't engage the law. Every time we talk about something, we, uh, we talk about something and then we don't engage it. We, we don't engage in it. So uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, let me, let me, let me invite on uh, Quizella. Would you want to have a take on this? Uh, yes, thank you, sir. Mm. As a country, well, I won't say that we are too badly off because even the bad person has something good with him. So with Uganda, I would like to say that to some extent, but a large extent, uh, we are really somehow down in terms of democracy, I can say that. Uh, for example, uh, when you hear of people being arrested during the free and fair elections you're talking about, yes, COVID has really taken part in trying to make things not work the, the, the way they should be. Uh, but when you find that things are being applied in a segregative way, or when you find that uh, Using the Public Order Management Act, some people follow it and others don't follow it. You tell me that indeed it is somehow not the best. For example, when we talk about freedom of press, yes, we can say it is right. How then, what can we say about the shutdown of Facebook? Some of us go to learn about the internet through Facebook. Some of us used to do advertisements, which is the social economic part of it. And even, you know, talking to our friends, right now we are not having it taking place. Talk about the, the, the press where they bet some journalists, you know, that like Joseph Inamakum of NBS, very many people we are beaten as we are doing their work. So when you are tampering on the, on the press and you're tampering on how people should engage, and then you are taking away the communication, you are taking away the information. And to me, if somebody is not informed, then he cannot have proper decisions on who to vote. Meaning, this one will come and impair the way we do our free and fair elections. To me, for now, I am, I am 25 years. The way, or the time I've come to get some knowledge about uh, my country, the politics of the country, and how people are relating, I can say that I've not seen any fair and free election. That's my view.
So I think when I'm to when I'm to say that maybe we are doing better, we can say maybe forty five percent. But when you come out and look at the civil organisations that are trying to help us, you know, human rights defenders. Last time we saw chap chapter four, they said, do in twenty sixteen we had action eight being you know shut down, and all such kind of things really make us as a young generation as university students who are looking at building our nation in terms of the social, political, and economic really feel very sad and with a lot of fear because how will I come? For example, I'll give an example. Me, I am a, a student doing nursing and I happen to have contested for president of German University. And uh, I'm fearing because when I get out, let me say I'm not in the, I'm not in the side of the ruling government. How will they treat me? I'm ready to be beaten. I'm ready to be taken to Kitchitabi. I'm ready to be, you know, persecuted in any way. So such things make our democracy rate go very low. Such things make us to be in this civil space that is not only shrinking, but coming to a close because we are not doing better. We are going to the worst. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Akwizera, for for having a go on that, and uh, you, you, you were sharp on that. Uh, let me invite in uh, uh, Robert. Robert, we, we are trying to dissect on uh, democracy, and uh, you seem like you. this is a, a, some of the areas that you're quite uh, passionate about. Uh, let me just uh, bring you across our national objectives and the directives of, 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 course of state policy. Uh, clearly point out uh, the issues on rights. We have our political uh, rights. We have our social and economic rights. We have our cultural rights. Uh, of course, and a few, as well as a few, uh, the rights of minorities. So I want us to, to, to just a quick score. How do we score and fare on these rights as, uh, as citizens? Because then this also affects our civic space engagements at all levels, including at the universities. Thank you so much. And when a question like that is posed, on such issues of rights, freedoms, still in the context of democracy, I would want to dive in in this way. But one of the most interesting things is that majority of the things or words we are using, not forgetting the language to which we are discussing in right now, is a foreign language. And so among the things that were borrowed and brought in the previous era of the colonization, was that as we were set out to lead ourselves, the word democracy came on the table so much. But as we are adopting this word democracy, it came along with its definition. And they told us that democracy is equal to, or is equivalent uh, to accountability, as you broke down, you talked about free and fair elections. You talked about uh, freedoms of press. They also added multi-party systems and the rule of law and the likes. Now, tackling uh, the uh, democr uh, democracy in that perspective, I would say that Uganda in particular, as to where we are, the degree of measurement uh, to establish the percentage and extent, I'm not going to deliberate and uh, say that this is on standing on this, but based on my presentation, I'm going to engage you and the rest of the viewers. As we talk about the facts and reality to come up with a fully informed establishment of the extent to which we score. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about something like freedom of press, but after talking about freedom of space as being one of the key elements of democracy, freedom to access information, and thereafter I hear that news writers, journalists, radio presenters are arrested day and night, I would put a question mark on that freedom. If you tell me that I'm free to have information and I have the freedom of press, I have freedom of expression, but I find that one of the channels that I would use is blocked. Therefore, my degree of freedom is questioned. Therefore, I would come up with a statement that spells or speaks as follows, that freedom is not free. To which extent would it depend on someone's digest? But I want to say 
that when you look at such collective efforts, you talk about accountability, where people make accountabilities as a form of fulfilling a requirement rather than giving out to the out picture or giving out to the reality where people have to do to ascertain that yes, we have worked on this, we have finished this, and as established by law, we are meant to bring out a report. And therefore, accountability does not become a true or transparent show of what has expired, but rather a legal requirement of an office to show that we are advancing from one level to another still becomes questionable. When you talk about free and fair elections, then I would not expect something like reading of an election after you have made it free and fair. And so the extent as to whether we are scoring well or not would depend on your digest, because if you're one of the people that are sending... Robert, to... Robert, yes, Robert, uh, just right there, I, I would want us to speak with facts, because then the, the, we have, uh, do you have any facts that uh, we've had read the elections? Or do you have... Hmm. I like that because in you know, the most recent uh, 2021 election, January elections, and let's see if the other media platforms that we could have gotten information were still blocked to some users. But the case of uh, reading election going up to the high court with the summoning of some of the presidential candidates, it was very vivid and beyond. Uh, something you can hide. That is not an ambit issue, but rather something brought before the press. And uh, uh, that would only tell me that you're on the right track, but continue. Mm. Leaving out some of the others, but when time allows, I'll also talk about it. Democracy, when you talk about the multipartism, as we have it being implemented here, as to whether it is in its rightful uh, way or not, would maybe mm. tackle it later on. But I mm. think the degree to which we may judge as to whether we are scoring well or not would depend on one's extent of argument and the line of inclination because it is not lost on me that even as we come and sit in this conversation, we are not meant to take home the best or we are not meant to take home the very similar message. Everyone is going to understand with inclination to what they have or believe. And therefore, I beg to submit to Mr. Moderator. I thank you very much, Robert, for that one, and I I hope to 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 get back. So, on, on towards the end, I think we shall have a more a more a broader conversation around the democracy and some of these tenants. I let, let us get back to 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 where Badru is. Yeah, Badru, you you set the pace for us, and uh, we have to to follow that. We are back to 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 civic space. So I want you to, to just uh, uh, tell us, how does the shrinking civic space, of course, the, the context of it, affect universities as a marketplace for ideas? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Yeah, if right. I may say, I, I, was, I, I, I waited for this question a long time back. <laughs> uh, mm. uh, my very first submission, uh, universities are losing their social responsibility. Hence, they are losing market. To back it with some flesh, uh, I may take you back to the so-called Gauli crisis at Makere. Uh, to my understanding, while they found out that these gowns were really made from China, yet our slogan is on buy Uganda, build Uganda, uh, if I may pose a question, Mr. Moderator, uh, what do you think uh, the parents of students at Makere, which parents work, let me say, uh, at Chiembe, these people earn money from tailoring, having heard about Makere receiving gowns from China, yet they make the same business to raise tuition uh, and pay for their students to get education at Makere. These students are likely to leave school and the university is likely to lose business because these parents shall have nowhere to get tuition to pay for their students. How comes a university in Uganda, uh, an agrarian economy, where people have much knowledge about tailoring, fail to give jobs to these people and instead give market to the Chinese economy, which is even at 
a bigger range of economic developments. Universities are more likely to lose markets. Therefore, they are being affected, if I may submit. Uh, to add on that still, students are being disturbed. Why? We are losing resourceful lecturers and we, we are missing out time. Uh, under the same context, uh, if I may talk with the viewers, okay, if I may say, what do they think? These students that were taking course units lectured by my Dr. Nyanzi, to go back to her, uh, these students were so much disturbed to the fact that uh, once she became on and off, she's denied access to her office. Uh, let me say she had collected the courseworks, had given some assignments and she had to mark. Don't you think these students had to wait till the stellar issue gets solved back? So it's creating a bigger confusion and these had they been graduates during that time, had they been okay approaching their graduation, they would miss out because they are lacking a grade on their sheets. The lecturer has been taken out, so we are missing resources. And to my understanding, I take this lady to be a very understanding academician. The way I was listening to her submissions and reactions about the ongoing uh, political affairs. Very many things. Uh, Another issue that I may raise uh, in the legal part of it, the UCC basing on its Act Section 5, around, I think around 2018, uh, with immediate effect, having issued that document, was instructing uh, media houses, publishers, uh, radios, TV, and even companies that sell data for communication to fully give in their belongings, okay, to disclose their secrecies and submit in to the demands of this association, the Uganda Communications Commission, to, 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 to give way for this body uh, to monitor, supervise, uh, license, and do such stuff, which I think limits the online civic space. Once they restrict, they put this legal restriction, uh, they are creating a reduced room for university students to access data online. Yes, they thought they were doing it for only the companies, but it is affecting us. Yes. We access uh, our reading resources online, and once they try to put this legal restriction based on the constitution they follow, I will say much to that. Uh, Badu, I want to ask, just I want to ask you on these restrictions that you're trying to point out that are really affecting your students. Why have we not seen you, the students, come out to contest this? Have we not seen any petition? We've not seen any match. We've not seen any demonstration. We've not seen <laughs> anything. But you are here trying to do, talk about them uh, freely and casually. Uh, yes, let you, if I may group my parents, uh, uh, to their belonging, they are peasants. I'm a child of peasant parents. Uh, <laughs> it actually gives me laughter. Should I come out to talk about such burning issues? Tomorrow you may not see me. I may end my debating session here. A drone may even come for me. That's the Uganda we live in. You come out to talk, they come out immediately to suppress you. Now, this is the conversation we are having today. That's uh, yes. what is now what is now limiting you, the university students, from engaging, from pushing back, from uh, on, on a repressive uh, rules and laws that are really affecting you. And one of the issues that you're pointing out is that you're fearing a drone. At the university level, if you go back to, to the stories on how, the, 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 for example, how the president came to be and where he is now, mm -hmm their generation kept fighting back, kept fighting back. You see the mouths of today, you know, the Nubu Bayombos, the times of, of their time, they kept pushing back. We are mm. seeing a generation today that is mm. not doing this. We are seeing a generation today that is fearing a drone. I, I, a, a drone a drone takes 14, yeah? If you have to say, it's a minibus, it takes 14. 
Yeah, yeah. Sure. How many? How many of you will it take for us to 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 keep? You know, to say that okay, we've taken all the voices that are out there. <laughs> In fact, if I may say, the biggest problem comes from up. The problem is not ours. We don't fear because we have fear in us, but the condition under which we live actually gives us fear. Okay, so let me let me get back to Rebecca. Rebecca, I, I wish mm -hmm. I yes, I, I know. Uh, let's get back to Rebecca. I I, I need you to 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 make your your interjection. Okay, to make your submission in this in this uh, uh debate and this especially this area where we are. What is really affecting universities? How does the shrinking space context affect the universities as a marketplace for ideas? It is what we are discussing on now. Okay, thank you. And to the question, how does the shrinking civic space affect universities as a marketplace for ideas? I looked at the, at the way it's affecting it in three, um, I grouped it into three. It's affecting the, the people, the, the people of the university economically, educational wise, and psychological and mental, mentally. So first, let me start with the economic economic way, the way it's affecting the students of the university, the way it's affecting the university as the marketplace of ideas economically. Um, I will go back to the internet shutdown that that it, first of all the Facebook app that is still shut down and the internet that was shut down during the politics. Economically, when you when you go to the Facebook app right now, youths of Uganda, uh, most of them are trading their things on Facebook. They are trading their things on Facebook. Like that's how they gain. First of all, fame, oh, even fame also helps the students of the university. So the shutdown of the university, the, the shutdown of the internet led to the economic shutdown. And the, the civic space is alienating youth souls from public gatherings. When you go back to the freedom of expression and freedom of assembly, when you go and start up a riot, for example, I, I will give an example of the activists that were arrested in 2019 at Mook. When you start up a riot or when you start demonstrating about something, you're going to be arrested. Like you're not given freedom of expression. So that is going to stop the youths and uh, the students of the university from public gatherings, which is also going to, to curtail the to curtail the, the, the economic to curtail the people economically. So I go to the just, to, just Rebecca, let me, let, me, let me ask you a quick one. Hmm. If the university, the students of Makere are pushing back on, on what they would feel is a repressive uh, uh, law or some, uh, some, some decision that has been made somewhere, and they're trying to push back, what stops you other university students from joining a cause like that? That is where... Why do we see... Yes, what, 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 where is the problem? Because we all, all the cities at the university called Makere, but we, we don't hear any of these at Bugema University, and yet these issues affect you as students as well. What really okay. stops you? Uh, that takes me to the next point, psychological and mental. When we look at our fellow students being arrested, it's, we, we get a fear in us. Like we fear to also express what we feel inside. We fear to walk the talk. We fear to to associate, we fear to express what we feel inside because we also think we are going to end up the way our fellow students are ending up. So, but you see, you can also, you can also, the fear cannot stop you from writing. You have, we have press that is there, can write. You can write that cause. You can write a protest note and send somewhere. You can. There, there are many avenues for you to show protest. The only, pro, the only, it's not that you're supposed to march on the street only. But there are many other ways of you can do a hunger strike, you can do, you know, there are many, many protests that are around there that could could show solidarity. So not, why, why? Mm. Not forgetting that not only activists that are arrested, not only people who are rioting, demonstrating that are arrested, demonstrating for, for their rights that are arrested, but also people who write out what they feel inside. 
when they they feel people who write who write out people who try to attack the misuse of the rights are also taken. For example, uh, certain journalists certain journalists have been arrested, uh, according to the just writing an article, you know. So that's it. And then educational wise. It has also affected us. The civil space has also the shrinking civil space has. Do you know? Affected. Do you know, Rebecca? Do you know uh, that uh, that uh, journalist that was arrested? We need to 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 be informed. I can arrest a journalist. I can give an the example. The one that uh, you've just talked about right now that has been arrested that was arrested for for writing. For writing, uh, I have an example of hmm. Hmm. Go on. of of our. Uh, during the during the elections, journalist Ashraf Kasibia was arrested because of you know trying to support the the opposition, trying to write articles about the opposition leaders. You know, so Ashraf Kasibia can give a very good example. So taking me back to the educational education uh, the way the, the civil space has the shrinking civil space has affected us education wise has affected university as a marketplace of ideas when we go back to some subjects that were banned i remember back then when we were still in primary our fellow sisters in secondary are telling us about political science which is not now there we don't we which was banned like why would they take away political science? Because it's through political science and civil science that we are going to understand our rights and we fight for them. Then even the, the way it's, it's, it has affected us, uh, still the internet takes us to, back to the internet. We should all remember that the internet is part of where we get our research from when it comes to universities. That's where we're going to go and interact, ask questions, you know, go to Cora, go to academic, Academicia, those apps that we ask. And then Facebook, we interact with our fellow students who are abroad or who are from other universities. So the internet shutdown that, that took place, or that is still on when it comes to the Facebook app, has, 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 has done, has helped, has, has come up with a civil civil space mm. that people people fail to get the internet they fail to get what they are looking for from the internet it is mm. it is minimized like for example okay. if I want to know about a certain politician they are not going to give me that information for my research mm. okay yeah. I, I thank you thank you very much Rebecca. Oh, yes, of course we are moving. The discussion is uh, getting heated. I, I need to to bring in Quizera. Quizera, what is coming out clearly and what you we are seeing here, and where I am also getting this stuff is that we you know of the issues that are affecting you as young people and uh, affecting you as individually in the execution of what you should be doing at the university using resources like that will, that are very much available or online, but you really can't use them because then you are affected directly and you have your fellow students that are out there at the other universities are protesting or they're joining the cause to push back or to call for, for review in some of these. At some other universities, uh, you're not coming out to the occasion, you're not standing up to the occasion. And what I'm seeing, uh, what Rebecca just clearly said, is fear. Is fear enough? Is, is, is it the only way? And But we talked of, uh, of uh, drones coming for you. Then what then is the problem? Do you think this could should we say that now the universities are not up to the occasion and uh, they are kaput? Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I would like to to give you an example as I'm answering you. We will know that there are some things that cannot be found. If you cannot, if you are a shoulder, you cannot be on top of the head. And in this era, where you are a university student, you are a son to a peasant, as my brother had said. You don't have money to get a lawyer. 
you don't have even access to the media. You are you are telling my fellow here that you could write letters. Maybe media people would have seen it, you know. But I've tried several times, me as a person, to reach media, but I've failed. It is from this platform that I've gotten some time, some chance to speak out my views as a person. And all those hinder our communications and how we can fight for our rights. Example I'm giving is this. I'm Quizella, Quizella, Quizella. Yes, you, you'll be protected. Quizella. The people that that are uh, that joined the course were university students, yeah. The students that that uh, brought what we call the joined the liberation war were university students, and largely and largely they all describe themselves as kids of the peasants. You're now speaking and say telling us that you're a child of a peasant, but you have a generation that changed course of what Uganda is today, and they identify themselves as peasants. The peasants of today, who Kuzera is today, cannot even think of changing the course of a shutdown of the internet. Where is the problem? By then, by then, we didn't have a lot of tear gas in place. We didn't have a lot of obnoxious arrests in place. We are sure? who we are, yes, by right then, now, but it's like by, then, by, then, the, by then there were rebel movements, they were, they were taking up arms and overthrowing governments. You know, for you talking about opening up internet, we are talking about people who overthrew governments, which is which? Let me first give you this example. Yes. I first say that I beg to be protected because you are protected. University. It's <laughs> yes. also my university. Uh, it can be a university policy for every person to contest to be a president for a university, to be an SDA. For information, our university is an SDA-based institution. Mm. You cannot contest to be a president of this university if you are not an SDA. Mm. Students who are non-SDAs can never at one time, and they could be better leaders they could be loving their country even more than the people that are in army. But how do you start up as a student to change that course? How will you be protected? Because the university has lawyers, has everything. You can lose your, your course anytime. How will you come up and begin? Yes, they may say the courts of laws are there. There are people that can protect you. But you have the finances, you have all this. People are minding about their own businesses. Quizera, uh, changing uh, some of these university policies uh, is, uh, is, the, is uh, a matter of uh, seeking for audience and having a conversation. And you need to paint a picture where you feel, OK, this is my position. And it also affects us differently. Being an university, some of us are grooming our leadership journey. And we possibly we should be had in this kind of perspective. We are seeing this. It's not all SDAs like you at the university. We also have the same issue at, uh, at IUIU, and also we have the same issue at uh, Uganda Matters University, where also Catholics also have the same issue. But it could should it be a, a question of how do you engage the leadership at the university? Do you seek for audience and have a conversation that will change a policy like this one? Yes, we seek for the audience, but the fact is you cannot change those policies. And the only thing to do is if you are a non SDA, just come study, pass and go. And all those are the things that are bringing all this civic space to shrinking because people are not enjoying their freedoms to express, to contest and serve their people. That's what I'm talking about. You said those people a long time ago, the people who joined the Bashan Army, were also sons of peasants, but the world has changed. The way the world was before is not the way it is now. You can say that like right now we have a lot of civil organizations that can fight for our rights, but before they were there even. The issue now is do we have the access to them and you have what it takes for them to come and protect you? How much is getting a lawyer to come and remove prosperous from the jail? You know, all such things can turn out to us with this economy, with the internet. Actually, 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 act
in our spaces, actually, maybe it's a question of information. There, there, there are spaces, all their 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 bodies that offer legal aid and uh, pro bono services to to activists out there and who are doing their work. So it is important that you check out some of these uh, uh, spaces. Lapsnet is there. We have a strategic response international part of our partners that uh, we work with. So it is important that you you, you you seek out some of these and get to know in case you need some of this legal help. You know, it is not entirely that you have to pay for it, including if you go to, to the law uh, council itself, they they would they they they, they would give you some of the people that really do pro bono work. So it is important that you, you need to, to have this information and work with it. You can proceed in a, in a, in a second and you get on a, a Yes, uh, I wanted to add my view on how the shrinking civic space context has affected universities. And uh, I'm talking about uh, promoting of injustice. We well know that when a problem comes, of course, Ugandans are very intelligent. Most the IT students of universities, they look for a solution. For example, the shutdown of, on, on, on Facebook. We are still accessing Facebook through VPNs, virtual private networks. And that one is an injustice to my country because I'm not paying a tax. It is because I don't want to pay a tax. No, it is not because of that. But I am not happy with how they have banned the Facebook. So a generation that, that is coming from such an environment where the injustice and the heart of trying to escape serving your country will not participate in the future very well. You'll find that injustices are continuing and a lot of crimes will be more in the society. Talk about the service. We always use some social gatherings uh, media, and then uh, uh, relating with each other, the togetherness, to empower our people. For example, some of us who are into um, health and then politics, we always have some gatherings, even outside, that we can tell them about how they can prevent some diseases, how they can uh, overcome some youthful challenges. Now, if you come to find out that such gatherings are being prohibited, are being, you know, people are being arrested because they think they should, they could be not in line with, with the government or some people that are, that are in power, then we always fear to ourselves and we always come out, we, don't, we always don't come out to give our views and change our societies. So all those bring a lot of disservice and people that are not helping the communities. Thank you, thank you very much, Quizella. Uh, uh, let me let me let me bring in uh, uh, Robert uh, on on this issue and uh, Robert, but also to add on. Uh, do you think that there is, of course, relevance, and do you think it is important to have the universities aspects shrunk or shrinked by by the powers that be? It is not Rob important. I no, this is for Robert. This is for Robert. I want to bring in Robert. Yes. You asked that do I think that there's relevancy mm. in the shrinking space? Did I get it right? Yes, in, in shrinking the spaces, for, especially for all the universities, uh, for the universities and the spaces where you engage as young people. Well, thank you so much. <clears throat> Much definition was made and elaboration on shrinking civic as uh, civic space. But as I said in my four words as we were beginning in the introduction, I remember saying that it would vary and differ from one speaker to another. And therefore, the notion of shrinking civic space would be examined differently and people would give it different meanings. But in my own understanding and context, I would love to express the shrinking civic space in terms of limited engagement, in terms of obstructed action, and to some extent, closing of space totally. Now, riding on those 
far ways, I would say that having discussed with the rest of my, as the rest of the panelists have been putting across, even you as the moderator, civic space happens to arise from or to be a result of freedoms of information and expression from the assembly and association, citizenship participation and communication without hindrance, of course, allowing the rule of law that I universally accepted. And therefore, that means that any action that controverses that would detect or would pronounce its shrinkage. And that is where I would take you through stuff like violation of human rights and freedoms, the decrease in the work environment, and I'd also talk about the denial or suppression of public opinion, as we shall see. I'd also not forget to talk about the inability to express oneself without condemnation and uh, a lack of freedom to challenge and express different uh, differences in opinion. One, having looked at that and bearing in mind that universities as institutions of higher learning, where we expect knowledge to be developed, shared, challenged, and tested for purposes of a continued sustainability, development, and civilization, which qualifies universities in the first place as a marketplace for ideas as we are discussing. Because once this sharing and transfer from those that are willing to share and able to and those that are also willing to learn, of course, with ability context, it makes it obviously a marketplace. And therefore, how is the shrinking civic space, the context affecting the universities as uh, the marketplaces? You know, as I just said, when conditions that would allow such free transfer is hindered or tampered with or minimized or undermined, definitely it affects the universities both by input and by output. What would that mean? That would suggest uh, a case in point where we have uh, a narrowed work environment. Much as we go into universities to get knowledge, this knowledge being piled up without action will be useless because it would just create a different class of only the people who have a good storage capacity rather than implementation strategy and also being developmental aspects. Robert, um, yes, maybe to ask you also, have yes. the students themselves contributed to the shrinking civic space? Very much, as I'm going to put it among my submissions. I beg to follow what I had come. I love order. Yes, having taken that, in the, when the civic space out there is narrowed, especially in the work environment, it means that these universities are going to raise out graduates every time, but because the work environment is narrowed, then the university won. The students are going to be the primary burden bearers because they're not going to get what they got out of their, their investment. Because I come to study, file, and accumulate knowledge with expectations of going and implementing for the betterment of my country. And so therefore, if I am not granted a chance of implementing, it is a disservice. And as more and more university graduates go out there and they are not granted a chance to work and operationalize, also the university will lose its meaning because why would I keep on producing without selling out? Personally, from the business view, there's no need of having much stock without sales. And so it affects the university. Briefly to hint on that question that interjected, and I hope I would be able to continue with the what I began. The university students, yes, could possibly have their contribution because as we said, and as we are looking at the general state of the civic space in Uganda, and among the people who are in that civil circle includes the universities, especially those in Uganda. And so as university students, as some of my colleagues are putting across, I like the question that you asked them, that if students in Makere are being at, uh, uh, under uh, attack or are under threat, what have you done to back them up or which other method have you used? It would not be right to judge one by their means of ability because we have different abilities and therefore that pronounces that our strategies will also be different, just like we follow or we follow different catastrophes. 
And therefore, that's, 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 what wanted, I, I, that's what I wanted to find out when I asked that question. I wanted to find out what have you done as Ugema, the students here, yeah, to join the cause for what Makera was fighting for? Because this was affecting all of you, and this is still affecting all of you as students. So that's why I asked, what have you done? So I needed to see some of the strategies and some of the issues or some of the causes that you fronted in support or in joining the cause. Very much, just that I had not yet made my submission tells that I could have had that in my presentation. Just as Please go ahead. Time. Please go ahead. Yes. Thank you. And therefore, as they plan and have different modes of action, they would present or put forward different means of approaching it. As university students, one is to have the will and the zeal to be part. But as many are going to tell you that one of the reasons why they do not participate in them is because some actually do not know. And it would sound like a shame, but given the background of which I want to dwell on so much, or which I do not want to put as a major at this time, may decide not to be uh, actively participative. But as I may say, what we are doing, for instance, here at Bugema University, I will not necessarily speak on behalf of all universities. I would best uh, talk about mine. As a university, I do not want to say that this is the first or it is the only avenue we have gone through to air out this much as it is also one of the things we are doing. Had, had that not been part of our course or as part of our desire, I think we would simply tell you that we are not ready to participate into this. But the fact that we are here and we are in it is one of the actions that are showing that we are doing something about it because our views are being aired out. Another thing that we are doing uh, to have it on board or to have it addressed is the fact that we are not having a general assembly of all students is also another symbol or significance that we have created a system of listening to one another and sharing, and therefore we can have a principle of trust, upholding, and also support from one another. The fact that you're seeing four panelists is another big, 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 big chance and another big of, um, achievement here in Bugema University because these are not hired mercenaries, they are students who are well representative of the rest from whom we have consulted and to whom we are representing. And so that is not a one night action that we just stand and represent their views. It shows that we have laid channels of communication and we are in touch with one another right from the beginning. And therefore, as Bugema, I would say, we are not asleep. That is not only contesting to this. The fact that a university runs from one activity to another is a proof that there is coordination and there is life in it. Much as there are activities out there that seem to threaten the progress or the work or the activities that students would be doing, the fact that we see progress in the other areas, academically, socially, economically, and different programs that we run here and there, even the existence of universities up to now shows that there's life and progress. And therefore, civic space would not only be political, much as it was borrowed and modeled by the Americans from the Latin word civicus, meaning of citizenship or relating to a citizen, I would not want to say that it is purely political, because when you look at that of what a citizen does, is not only politics, we participate in the rest of the, uh, the, the, the portions that a, a citizen should do to their nation. These are Bogoma students that participate in various other activities. They go out in the economy. We are part of the economy runners and we constitute some of the sectors. If I had much more time, I would elaborate more about the sectors of the economy. But I know with time we shall dig deep into it. And therefore, I would beg to submit that as students of Bogoma University in particular, we are not at any point seated. That is why none of the panelists here is shaken. They are all confident because <laughs> the matter that we are addressing is not news to us, it's something we take in our daily lives, not because it has come for a purpose of debate. And uh, I would assure you that we on the matter of address. And as we continue to go through, probably we would come up with suggestions because knowledge, as I said in my Yes, yeah, so we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> thank I you very much, uh, Robert. Yes. And thank you very much for the confidence that you've given not only us here, but also the students that are watching you right now that are following this conversation. 
uh, both Bugema and uh, all the other universities that are into this conversation. So uh, let, let me get back to, to, to Badru. Badru, I, I am very much interested in the conversation that uh, uh, Quizera had picked on, and uh, because he's formerly uh, uh, a contestant for, for leadership at, at the university, and I, I know this issue has uh, not only affected uh, many students that have gone through Bugema, but that has also affected other university students that are in other uh, religious uh, best uh, universities. The issue of having leadership contestation that uh, provides for, for space for all, not only those that are inclined to a given religion. Mm. At what point and when do you think is, is the, the most or the best time for a conversation that will be tabled to the university? And you think that, yes, at this point, a policy like this that allows all of us, a Muslim, a Catholic, uh, which other religion is there, can be able to contest for leadership at the university. Do you think this is possible and do you think we can have a policy like this revisited? Because it is not a policy that is taking off university institution, but it's a, a policy that is giving chance to all of you to participate and also grooming you into leadership. Uh, so thank you so much, Mr. Moderator. Uh, uh, as Minister Prosper has talked about it earlier that he contested, uh, I would like to first make two points first. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I, I was the chief manager of one of his rivals. <laughs> Those <laughs> something has brought us together, as we've always been. Uh, uh, yes. Another point is that I'm to put you no, there, there, no, there are no permanent enemies in politics. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, another point is that I'm to put our cross, uh, we break such chains through try and errors. Uh, I personally, uh, I'm of a Muslim religion, uh, but I ended up creating some confusion. I personally, I was also in need of that post. Indeed, I would also <laughs> run out for contestation. <laughs> I ended up being baptized, not because I had it to change, but because I was running up for something. To now, I was baptized, the following day, I made sure that I put on an Islamic cape and a kanzu to pass before the dean, such that you could see me and become more suspicious about what is ongoing. I don't know if you notice it, but I also need to be protected. <laughs> you, are you are protected. You are protected. You are protected. And it's a conversation, yes. Yeah, sure, thank you. Uh, to the best of my think tank, uh, mm -hmm. we've been trying, actually, I personally have been involved in moves to reduce this shrinking space. I've made friends at Makere, I have friends at Tambogo and elsewhere. Yes, it's a primary point, uh, but through coalitions and the alliances with other university bodies, I think it's more possible to overcome all the challenges that we... Uh, let me say, for instance, how comes Makere is uh, striking over a few hike and you people are there slept? <laughs> uh, it's only possible at that very instance because we're not yet having coalitions and alliances with them. But had it been there, <coughs> maybe our universities that have not yet increased the fees would not it from them that okay, to the fact that these people are in a coalition and they are in alliance with the, the other students that are not part of us, uh, it's more possible that should we also scrape the fees, they are more likely also strike. Coalitions and alliances are better, uh, though sometimes we are events. Uh, our university is an Adventist affiliated institution. Uh, but should they hold strikes? Not on Sabbath, Friday evening, and then the following day. Then we are more likely also to help them. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> so now the conversation should be 
at what point do you think you can have a conversation with the university administration to have at least participation of you, a Muslim, as a guild president, for example? Mm. Uh, when yes. Do you think this is possible? And if, if it is possible, which, how do you think you could go about this to ensure that this happens? Because this conversation is going to stay on record and it will also help other university students. Maybe you might be leaving, you could be in your, your final year, but also there could be something you could say as a strategy for now to engage the administration. And this could also help the other university, the other students that will join it to pick up from there and say, oh, look, there are predecessors and started a conversation around having us, also the Muslims, from the Muslim fraternity uh, join and also become guild presidents. Because yes, we are from here, we are going to aspire to be different leaders at all, the, uh, possibly local and international level or national level. But the, the conversation has to start somewhere. You need to also add, add that on your CV, that I, I was part of the leadership that changed the policy at the university. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the very first point here uh, arises from students' leadership. Had I been looking for votes, uh, maybe I would say a vote badru to apply some legal mind, because indeed we need to see the law operating on some instances. Uh, for example, had that, uh, in fact, the university may be having lawyers, uh, as I may say, uh, but should we apply really a legal mind and say that this legal restriction is uh, being eroded off? Maybe let even a non Adventist have a chance to participate in the political arena of the university. I'm seeing some possibility because to the fact that they are limiting uh, the possibility to only the Adventists, it means maybe it's a maybe. Maybe other members of our, members of other religious dominions have an ability. I'm seeing some possibility there that should some restrictions be put off, erased and eroded off. There is I'm seeing some possibility. I, I don't think I don't think I don't think this issue, especially when it comes to religion, would mm. involve it would involve evoking so much of the law. But it, I think it is, uh, it is a conversation that would be on, on religion, but also on a moral kind of uh, uh, pedestal that you could, you could argue it in that way, that no, we are students that also have, have, have possibly uh, our, a right really to also, since we are the university, this is a space we came to learn and learn, yeah. but also, yeah. also growing to leadership, can mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to mm -hmm. also express share interest and also express as of, 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 of growth. Let me bring it back to, 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 to Rebecca. I, I need to, to involve, to bring Rebecca into, into this conversation. I picked the mind of Quizera, but I just want to bring the mind of uh, Rebecca to this. Rebecca, are you there? Yeah. Yes. I, 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 I need this is a conversation and I, will, I think I will have this um, conversation I've had it before with the university students at of, of uh, IUIU and uh, um, uh, Uganda Matters University. So it is, it is, it shouldn't be any, any serious or any more a new thing here. Can't we have a dialogue? Can't you create a dialogue where you would not want to bring in the law, where you don't want to 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 to, to make a push and pull? Yeah, a strike or something, but engage at the at the general assembly with the administrators, yeah, and say, look, this policy should be able to allow us also, yeah, participate in a conversation that is going to take us somewhere, a law that would allow us to be leaders because we also want to be leaders at our local levels, and we need to start from here. While, while we are giving you tuition and why we chose to come to the university like Rugema, knowing that it is of course an SDA, we also knew that we are going to learn and we are learning what we came to do, but also we need to learn other skills. Thank you. Uh, question, I have understood very well the question. And my answer is we can have it. Like we can have a dialogue 
sit with our leaders, our dean, dean of students, our vice chancellors, and talk to them about the, the issue. The problem with we students is we sit on our stores. Like we 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 hear that they only allow Adventists to be presidents of the university here in my university. But then we go back, we don't talk to the vice chancellor or we don't write anything concerning that. We go back to our fellow students and talk that issue to our fellow students who also don't have access to any office that is going to grant that. So my my issue here is the fact that we fear to talk to our, I, I'm still bringing back the fear, we fear to talk to our vice chancellors or we fear to argue or we fear because we are not going to demonstrate, we are just going to talk about it or have a dialogue about it. That is what is hindering us from getting maybe presidents from other religions in our university. That's all I can say about this issue. Uh, uh, Rebecca, uh, Badro talked about creating alliances mm. and uh, alliances cannot be, because he talked about alliances that are external. Uh, possibly engaging, like saying he has friends with the Macari and other spaces. But there also other alliances that can be internal. I'm sure there are other administrators that are, are open to engagement that possibly you can't be fear to engage. Could be a dean of students, could be the, the, the chaplain himself, could be anyone that you, you think would share a conversation at, at, at a more basic uh, level where you don't need to, to, to feel so much uh, intimidated and propose something like this and create more alliances with, with, the, with, the, with the external staff, okay, the support staff, yeah? And, and have a group of people that believe in something like this and you table, table yes. this to, to the chaplain and the, the, the chancellor and you see what happens. Yes, we can have that alliance. The only issue here is with students, we as students, as the student's body, we fear, we fear. 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 Yes, the, the fear is the issue. Because yeah. yes, we can have the day, our lecturers, we are, we are glad we are gifted with the very good best lecturers and the very best administration. Um, our lecturers are approachable. The dean of students are approachable. You can approach the dean of students. You can approach any office in Bugema University if you wish to. But what we are going to do is go back. I'm going to go back to Prosperous, tell him the issue, who is also, who also doesn't have access to any office, not the dean of students, not the chancellor's office, and talk to Prosperous, then talk to Badru or talk to Mugisha about the issue, which, we, which is going to stay within us like within us as students. So that problem here, the only issue here is about um, the fear. The only, the only thing we should get out of us is the fear. And then we open up a dialogue with our fellow lecturers, our fellow dean of students, and we bring that topic up and they see the, the, the way out of, of, of this. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Now, Quizera, let me bring you in, and uh, possibly you might have to, to say a word or two, because this is a conversation that you started, and I want to bring it to you. But before you would say much, I want to ask, uh, what role uh, do students, possibly what role can students uh, play in providing uh, solutions to, to the ever-shrinking space in the universities? Uh, students can play a very big role I would like to add a voice on uh, the question you ask them, is it possible for a students like us, Bugema, to come to the university and talk about such a policy of having an SDA president contest only for the president? Well, I give it a possibility. Only that you ask me why I haven't I tried it. Yes, I haven't tried it, but I would say that personal discipline as being an SDA university, personal discipline is the best. It depends on the way we approach things. Violence cannot yield anything. True, true. Things, violence is needed in, a certain, in some way. But for us here, I believe that personal discipline and the way we approach I, um, issues is so much important. So I feel like I should go back to my, 
my fellow students, we, we come up with a meeting with the stakeholders of the university, the Senate and whatever, we see how we can harmonize with that. Because the many years we have spent here in the university, I think we have lost a lot of prominent leaders that we could have yielded within our university that can change the world. So I think when we begin with this year, changing that policy, in the near future, we can have better leaders resulting from the change of that policy. Uh, the way how we can also uh, help in solving the problem of the shrinking civic space, first of all, you, can solve, you cannot solve something you do not know. Do we know our rights? Do we know our freedoms? Do we know that we are being, you know, we are, we are being uh, pushed into, into the world or we do not know? If we know that I am supposed to be having, okay, like for me, from the Department of Health Sciences, I'm supposed to go to the hospital, uh, do all this kind of stuff, then I am supposed to be having that. Do I go and demand for it? Why just leave things to go the way they are? And also, we shouldn't leave everything in the hands of our leaders because when a president is elected, he will probably be corrupted most of the times with what he finds on his plate as a president. Now, what are we as students looking at? We know what we need as students, we know what we are supposed to be having. We go further and fight for it. We should not have this kind of fear. Yes, it has to be always there. Within the regard that we are having, within the way we see how our brothers and sisters are being treated, it has to be there. But when you have given it to us, you have to have a you pulse back. You make sure that things have worked. If they have not worked, look for other alternative solutions and see how the freedom of assembly association and your freedom is being protected. We can work on it. I am sure we can achieve it here at Ugema University. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. Uh, it's a good assurance. And of course, uh, part of what we are having as a, as a the university and part of uh, the, the objectives of uh, this whole co uh, competition and the conversation going through the 25, uh, 24 universities now uh, across the country is to ensure that at least we have some of these very, very, very sober conversations, but also trying to change the mindset and also trying to change uh, the way we do things. I'm, I'm happy that you just up into, into uh, you've been pushed, we've been, we've provoked you into at least having a thought to have a dialogue with the university. At least uh, it's something that we need to, to know that uh, not all solutions are solved by striking violence in a way. There are also times when you can have a dialogue at the university and I'm sure the leaders of these universities know that this is happens and that's why you have student leaderships uh, across the universities because they're supposed to be intermediaries and you're supposed to have conversations and dialogues where you feel you're offended, where you feel you don't, you don't agree. You, you need to, to come through and have a dialogue that will change the course of events. Thank you very much, Robert. I, I need to bring you on. Uh, Robert, we're trying to discuss and also agree on uh, what the roles that are uh, possibly the students play in providing solutions for the ever-shrinking space in the university. Thank you so much. And sometimes when you're being moderated, it's very important to have self-discipline. At times a good question may be posed to a different speaker and you feel like taking someone's space. You're okay to interject. You, 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 you're okay. It is okay for you to, to, to also have a tech yeah, on a question like that and also feed into the new one. It is okay. Thank you. I would a little, before I handle that, I, I had something to say about uh, why we would be there. In other words, why would the shrinkage be there and students seem not to talk or seem not to act or seem not to do something about it, about that shrinkage? I, that does not say that those who did not do much, but just that we are in a brainstorming session and airing out a view is one of the ways of having it solved. And I would enter into that with this statement that 
if I were moving by the riverside or by the lake and I found a fish swimming with a rotten head, I would be surprised. That it suggests to me you could have a setup, but right from the beginning, it has a lot of connection and meaning to connect, if I may say. I want to submit that sometimes we have a problem of this functionality of the systems we have in our institutions, not only as a university, but even at a country level. That was far discussed to catch up with time. Let me handle my question on what uh, the role that students can play in providing solutions to the shrinking space. I certainly believe that it is possible and we still have much to do as students because as university students, who I believe we are here to develop ideas, develop knowledge, come up with new concepts because it is an institution of higher learning. Not all thoughts, not all ideas would be the same for all people. That is why I would say that different words may require different fronts or uh, different strategies. And that is to say that there might not be one size fits all. And so every situation might be handled by a different technique. That is why students at Makere might be uh, striking over a fee increment, but if it is not the case with Bogema, I might lose a stand to stand and say a word that why is Makere increasing the fees, yet it is not the bank to which I'm paying. And therefore, sometimes situations require uh, mitigation as they fall due. I therefore say that there are those other factors that students, irrespective of the situation, irrespective of the circumstance or where you are, you still can make an input and throw in your contribution, whereby if you can still find space to do a free participation and sharing of ideas, that could not be hindered, irrespective of where you are. We share ideas in our various media. We use phone calls because we talk to each other on a daily basis. There are those we happen to meet in our circles of conversation on a daily basis. On the still existing platforms of the internet, we still meet because, uh, Mr. Moderator, we are now talking to you, but we're not with you right here where we are. So it means I could still meet someone if I had planned to do so. And so we could use such avenue to still talk about such pertinent issues to see that we liberate our country from such problems and stopping them from advancing into a state where a cancer is no longer curable. I would also not forget that as students who go into this leadership of the universities, and I'm glad that we have people that have uh, shown interest, much as others might also have had the same but decided to keep it docile, but to every university where they may be, the moment you still see the art of leadership coming up and you're presenting ideas, you're bringing forth things that you'd call suggestion for the betterment of your institution, for the start and changing of nations, I would say that is still another milestone that we do not have to look down upon. And therefore, as these people come up, I would urge them to have a sacrificial or patriotic uh, mind in them, that they do that patriotic role in them that is necessary, not only for their personal benefit as they go into leadership, but they should set systems of people that should have the will, the zeal, courage, and ability to bring forth a system that may not necessarily benefit them directly, but rather look forward that have begun a movement, have begun a move, have brought a suggestion that may not actually work right now, but the students that will come far later after me may enjoy the ideal environment that I thought would want to see in my university. That is something that students themselves ought to do and bring forth. And so as they share these pertinent issues, of course, cutting across all spheres of life, I'm sure that the civic space can be reclaimed because as I said in the beginning, the people being affected by the shrinkage are not only students in school because the students themselves are part of the general public who still fall under the same civic space. And so even as they go out there, they have communities where they come from, they have siblings that are not in the university as the institution. And so if you freely pass on this message from one person to another, of course, that is withholding the fact that there may be other, with other uh, hindrances that will stop that free uh, passing of such information. Putting that aside, I believe that this knowledge would be held by majority. And so collectively and aggregately, 
may be in position to reclaim the civic space and to put our nations and the continent in the better place. I thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Robert. You speak like a philosopher. Huh? Uh, it's interesting, and uh, possibly as we are, we are almost tending towards uh, the closure of our conversation, I would want uh, to open it a little up to 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 the floor, to to the four of you, to ask just ask each other one question that you think should arise out of this conversation that you might think that uh, should also be formative to, to the discussion. So uh, whoever feels like opposing a question to the colleague, I would want to use uh, five minutes to see to it that uh, you could have a cross exchange and uh, we get to, to the, almost the final bit of our conversation. Whoever raises up their hand first goes first. <laughs> Yes, Bachelor. Okay, thank you for your thank you for the you, you're not supposed you're not supposed to ask the moderator a question because the moderator is supposed to ask questions. So you're supposed to ask your fellow students, your fellow panelists. And now the moderator. <laughs> yeah, you could ask any. <laughs> okay. I think I think my question would go to all of them. Do you people think uh, the civic space can really be reclaimed back. You need to you need to, to pick out one person that you could ask a question. Okay. Mm. Uh, I beg to to pick Mr. Mogesha, the very last one. Yes, yes. Uh, do you really think the civic space can be reclaimed back? Well, thank you. <laughs> By virtue of the fact that you have posed, I guess the question is complete. Why do you think the civic space can be reclaimed? I believe yes. What gives me the courage to think that the space can be reclaimed is because we have established the factors that have shrunk it. And therefore, as I've known what has made something small, I would simply reverse them and expand them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, who, who, who goes next? Uh, Robert, would you want to? Okay, yeah, okay, we have uh, Rebecca's raised her hand. Uh, Mr. Mugensha said that you can come up with some ideas that can reverse the shrinking of the civic space to expanding it. So, this question goes to Mr. Prosperous. What are some of the things that you can use or some of the what can we follow to reverse the civic space, the shrinking of the civic space? What can we do to expand it? Uh, thank you so much, my fellow sisters and Rebecca. Uh, to me, I think there are many things we can do, and some of them are uh, reach the people that are concerned. Do not fear. Hold the people that are in power, hold them accountable for your rights. Demand what you think you need and what you think is your right. If we do that and we know our rights, then we are going to reclaim our civic space. Apart from that, most of the, the largest part of the, of the shrinking civic space has been caused by our leaders. Now, if we as the youth, if we as university students, when we live here, we shouldn't leave our community to suffer. Let us participate in leadership. Let us contest for positions with the mind of making sure that people get what they deserve. We can reclaim this shrinking civic space. We become better politicians and have the good humanic heart. We will make things better. Thank you. I thank you very much, Quizera, uh, uh, for, for, for that. And also thank you very much, uh, Rebecca. And uh, of course, Badru for, for 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 pointing out those issues. Of course, uh, and Robert, uh, they are in. So let, I, I I have withdrawn the moderation from uh, from all of you. So uh, it, it is back to me. So let us let us uh, get towards the, the, the concluding and the conclusion. And this is the last question. I want to to ask. Um, what do you think are the best? Oh, do you think the university administrators? could play a huge role, but also 
which other stakeholders would you identify in ensuring that we can play or they can play a bigger role or a good role in ensuring that we can reclaim civic space in spaces of the universities? And which solutions really could they advance? What do you think should be part of the way they could play their roles? I need to start with as, as we started with Badro. Yes, thank you again. Uh, we quite have a number of actors and stakeholders because uh, this move actually can't only be held uh, by social societies. Let me start at PG level, let me start at district level. It is some context that is so broad and it can't be handled by just an area of people. Uh, with actors, uh, like law enforcing agencies, uh, we can put in the international non-government organizations uh, and other non-profit making organizations. I think they portray a better picture that this space can really be reclaimed back. Should there be possibilities of restrictions that have been put on these organizations being lowered down. Let the registration of these organizations be wiped out. Allow them to register. I may say, for instance, we have organizations like Compassion Uganda. Uh, we have a plan. Such organizations have uh, really put in much to reclaim this space. But because they also force a lot of legal restrictions, uh, a challenge remains running. So should that be tackled and handled by the ones that are on top of us, then I think the better we can achieve. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Badro. Let's, let's get to, to Rebecca. Uh, thank you very much. And what I think can be done is first, first I'm going to come back to walking the talk it doesn't make sense if we talk and talk and talk about the shrinking civil space, but then we are not acting or doing anything that can help us expand the civil space. So we should walk that talk how. Let us, let, let us engage the government in, in, the, in whatever we are doing. Let the government make known of the rules and the rights of the people and their freedoms. And the other thing is, let our administrators, uh, we request maybe our administrators to support the CSOs, the social, to, uh, to support the CSOs. So in that, maybe the role that's in, in doing so, people will get to know their rights and what they can do to expand the civil space. That's, uh, thank you, Mr. Director. Okay, thank you very much, Rebecca. Then uh, to, to Pizera. Uh, thank you so much. I believe that the administration has actually a very big role to play in uh, reversing or bringing the civic space back in universities because they are bosses, obvious. Now, I believe if they can empower students with what they need, showing them that indeed it is possible to make things happen, not the other way of not allowing meetings, not giving them the, their rights. I think they can do much better. Introducing civic courses that make somebody be aware. I can think that most of the universities here, most of the students in our university may not be knowing their rights, you know, uh, in, on, in, in a large scale, they may not be knowing that. So if we introduce such courses and we make them general, students can know. And one of the university responsibilities is to give knowledge to the students. If we give, if we give them their fundamental rights and freedoms, and then look at a holistic development of a student, not only empowering them with, with the medicines that we give them in, in classes, this we, we give them the spiritual upbringing, we give them the humanic upbringing and all other aspects of life, I think they'll be much better to live in an environment which is out of 
justice are not injustice. And by doing that, we'll be promoting the civic space of assembling, engagement, and participating in the activities of the community. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Kuzera. Uh, uh, Finally, uh, Robert, on this one. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you once again. Much as speaking last usually, disadvantages the speaker by some having their speeches preempted. I want to say that that for today will not work. But I want to make my submission in this way that the universities in the first place can make a change through directly providing equal opportunities for civic engagement as a local institution that can connect young and the old people alike. Of course, there are other factors, but there are other parties, or as we said, indeed, there are other stakeholders that have to participate in the reclaiming back the space. It is not a one-man responsibility, because even you, as a moderator, you have a role to play, and I want to thank you, because you're already doing a role, and not forgetting the panelists who are addressing the same question. Among the other stakeholders, therefore, that I'd like to break down include the students, of which we have fully discussed about, as to what they could do to reclaim that. So I will not repeat in uh, the case of saving time. The other party that would also not be left out are the CSOs. And I would urge the CSOs to prioritize on their objectives rather than being puppet organizations that would only and only dust the tunes of the governors. For those that have dug deep have understood my point, but to those that have not, I would add the simple flesh and say, that if you are standing up for the rights, go for a right as it is, not going for a right for some specified people. If they are old people and you say they are all equal before the law, let them get an equal share, much as equality may not signify equalism. Thank I want you, to say Robert. That now, Robert, I say I, in one second, in one second, as uh, I'm going to give you two seconds, in these two seconds, you also need to give your parting shots because we are getting into the closure. You'll be now you're going to start. So, in your as you're kind of concluding that, you also give your final remarks. Thank you so much. I think I'm among the speakers that have been interrupted most, but I take it for advantage. The government, as the head ruling party, as the head uh, uh, touch bearer, also has a role to play in the implication or in the the implementation of this as we reclaim back the civic space. Because as I said earlier on, it would be more of a shock and surprise if I met a swimming fish with a rotten head. And therefore, the government has the role to differentiate between serving the citizens and consolidating power. That you're not having that position to hold your position or for your power consolidation, but rather prioritize your citizens and have them served to what they expect. And also, the government should have it behind their mind to support or to give support for the right cause. Who are the government if there is no uh, subject to be addressed? And who will these leaders be if they are not taken from the subjects? Are they aliens? I guess no. And so if they prioritize and include the public into the, op into the opinion making, as we said in the beginning, that citizens are going to be considered part of the nation. And so they have an active role in determining what the nation does. If that is put into action, then the space is going sure to be reclaimed. The other parties besides that, I would say the rest of the citizens of the country that do not fall in the previously discussed categories, that is to say the rest. And they also have a duty to have the will, the love, and the courage that they should want to know about their rights. Sometimes we claim people should have their rights, but themselves do not want to know. And so if they do not have that question, hunger and thirst to know about their rights, how will you stand to start defending them? And so it's the collective effort in my conclusive remarks that as the people who constitute the citizens of the country, as the people who constitute a nation, we should look at it as a collective responsibility that you and I put efforts together to have the future that we would want to live in today. But that will only come at a cost of finding leaders that are able to think. But it is not a threat, but I want to say that if these situations continue to, con to, to go on like this, uncensored and looked into and discussed and without solutions, 
even France that had been at such a point of generations under a bubble monarchy seriously, the historians will tell you a revolution was inevitable. And so unless if you want a revolution to happen, we should come out now and act because if we leave it for one party, it will always be an equal. We could talk and talk, but I beg to submit to some moderator. Thank you very much, Robert, and thank you for always coming out as a philosopher. Let us go to, to Rebecca. Your two um, seconds, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, my conclusion is that, that however much you may see that the space is shrinking, some of the ideas that we have shared now and some of the ideas that we can go and look for in the field can still help us expand the space and share our rights and, and get to know our freedom, uh, mostly by walking the talk. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Vizera. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Moderator. To me, my cutting short is free and fair elections. Somebody say that you cannot elect highness to take care of gods, and when they are lost, you start asking yourself, where are my gods? It is obvious that they were eaten. Now, if we, if we elect leaders that know that a position in which they are serving in is just a gift for service, if we elect leaders that look at loving service and not loving power, it means that we'll be better. All these things that are happening, the shrinking civic space, 95% it is admitted the politics of the country and the desire for people to have their own things that they think they should be theirs. I think if we elect leaders very well, if we participate in the leadership of our communities, we are going to reclaim our civic space. I thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Quizera. Let us uh, finally have uh, a bedroom. Uh, let's thank you. Uh, the conclusive part of it, I would beg to say that despite the controversies and the chronic overcrowding, overcrowding that students have already talked about, uh, universities shall continue to provide a higher education to both the postgraduates and the undergraduates, but the pride of their tradition shall always remain in a spotlight, and hence the questions of freedom, freedom, and whatever shall remain in the myth than in reality. However, should we develop an ideology to say that the nation, let me say the ruling government, is really a despicable wench and submit into that, then it shall mean we have to toil on our own. Let us soil our tabs with our own fuel. Why can't we struggle on our own? Rather, should we not work on that, then all our meetings shall be rendered in this studio common sense. I beg to sign out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Badru. Thank you very much, uh, Rebecca. Thank you very much, Quizera. And finally, thank you very much, Robert, for being a wonderful uh, panel. And I, I'm just uh, very much humbled and privileged to have been given the opportunity. Of course, it was a blessing in this guys that uh, the other parties into, uh, into the moderation were off. And has been, been given the opportunity to, to take leadership in this one. I thank you uh, for being uh, this organized. I thank you for being a uh, part of uh, the inter-university competitions uh, engagements. Thank you for this dialogue. And to all uh, the, the other students that out there kindly be part of these conversations that are happening in all the different universities. They're happening live on Civic Space TV. Kindly subscribe to the channel, be part of the channel, subscribe, go to the YouTube link, subscribe. Those who are on Twitter, kindly follow the conversation on the, uh, the hashtag, inter-university debates, but also we are running live on Facebook and also on Instagram, there are also other posts that are happening there. Be part of the conversation, be part of the movement, be part of learning. This is where the space starts, this is where leadership starts. I thank you very much for being part of the conversation here. This has been Bugema and the Mighty Bugema. Thank you. We shall meet next week. And also towards the, actually, this is the last for this group. I would want to, to also guide so from this group, we are going for the live 
interface where all these panelists here will be interfacing with the other universities in one space. We are waiting to see how this comes out. May the best team win. Thank you. Thank you.